Hey everybody, in today's lesson, I wanna talk really quickly about why we might use a sharp key instead of a flat key or a flat key instead of a sharp key. Why don't we just make all keys sharp? Why don't we make all keys flat? Well, we've talked in previous videos about something in music called an enharmonic equivalence. And enharmonic equivalence occur when we have something like an A flat being the same thing as a G sharp. If you look on the piano, you'll see that G sharp is a half step above G, and A flat is a half step below A. And so A flat and G sharp are the same note. Now, the question of when we would call a note A flat and G sharp is again something we've looked at before. It depends a lot on the major scale that's being used and the types of letters that are needed to fill that scale. We've also talked about how major scales and key signatures are very closely linked. And so let's look at why we might call a certain key by a sharp name versus a flat name. So when we talk about sharps or flats, there is always a certain order that these sharps and flats are written in. So with sharp keys, a good way to remember the order is with the saying, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. And so the order of sharps is always F, C, G, D, A, E, B. And so whenever you see sharps written on the staff, they're always going to be in this order. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp. You're never going to see it in some weird order like F sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, C sharp, E sharp. That looks super weird. And that would never happen because it always goes in this order. Father Charles goes down and ends battle. So if I were to look at the key signature that uses all of these sharps, let's say we're using all seven. This represents the key of C sharp major. Now, cool little thing about the order of sharps is actually that all of these letters are separated by a fifth. So there's a fifth between an F sharp and C sharp. There's a fifth between C sharp and G sharp, a fifth between G sharp and D sharp, and etc. all the way down the line. So when we come to this last one, we've got a fifth. And let's say we wanted to add another sharp. Let's pretend we didn't have any flats ever, and we wanted to just try to continue to use sharp. So if I were to go up a fifth from B sharp, I get to the letter F again, but we already have F sharp on the staff. It was the first sharp that we added in the order of sharps. And if I count up a fifth from B sharp, I don't actually get F sharp. I get to a note that is half step above F sharp. If I need to have F sharp but sharp, then I get something called F double sharp, which looks like that little X, and that's something we really don't like to deal with. It does happen sometimes in music and it's really annoying and we're not gonna talk about it. So let's not deal with double sharps because that sounds super complicated. And let's instead switch to flats. If I were going to have an F double sharp, I would actually be representing the key of G sharp major, which is kind of a key, but more of a hypothetical key because we more often like to call it the key of A flat major. A flat is a lot easier to deal with than G sharp because G sharp major would have, as we found out, eight sharps or technically seven sharps and one double sharp. And that sounds super complicated. So instead, let's deal with A flat, which only has four flats. Based on the principle of enharmonic equivalence, G sharp and A flat are actually the same thing. Same scale, same key, but much easier to read in A flat major. So that's why at some point in music, we tend to flip to flats. Not because we're trying to make it more complicated, but actually because it's easier to deal with flats than it would be to deal with lots of double sharps. And of course, the same thing would be true if I were to start with flats. At some point, I would run into the problem of double flats and I would wanna to switch to sharps.